Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. Week five of the NFL season is here and I got some more spreads, over-unders, player props, and my favorite teaser this weekend. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're less than 500 subscribers away from 10,000. And if we hit it this weekend, I'll do whatever the most liked comment is down below. Within reason, if you're an OG subscriber, you know I shot 500 and made 500 free throws for 500 subscribers. So I'm down to do something, even if it is brutal, I'll still do it for you guys. So subscribe if you're new and click that like button. Let's make this the most liked video on the channel. I know you guys can do it, but let's talk about record. And last week, I always want to be transparent with you every single week. And if I have a terrible week, I'll be on here and I'll own it, unlike some other channels out there. But we went 9-8 and eight on straight plays, just losing a little bit less than half a unit. So not too bad, considering it was a bad week. We went 0-3 on, on parlays, which is discouraging, but we'll still get, get after it. As I always preach, bankroll management is important, and parlays probably aren't the easiest way to build up your account balance. But cumulative. 37 and 19 up over 12 units 18 and 10 on player props 11 and 5 on spreads 8 and 4 on over unders we've been having a really great start to the nfl season let's get after it this week where are we going to start with some spreads and i got chargers minus one and a half minus 110 on FanDuel, taking on the cleveland browns and this is at sofi stadium it is in la and i get it this could be a big letdown spot for the Chargers. Coming off a big win, obviously, against the Chiefs two weeks ago. And then the Raiders on Monday Night Football, which was arguably a, a road game for them as in their own stadium. The Raiders fans traveled out there. They said, this is our city. And they, they showed out. But like I talked about on the podcast, and I apologize to Browns backer who always is commenting on the videos, I just don't think I just don't think this Browns team is all that good. Let's flash back to Monday night though. I picked Chargers minus two and a half, and everyone in the comments was like, "Ah, no, Raiders are better." Blah blah blah. Yeah, I get it. Well, the Raiders didn't show up. I think they're a little bit overrated, but the Chargers throw a legit football team, and people finally understood that on Monday night football. And I think they, you know, I just don't trust this Browns team. I think they're a little bit overrated. Baker Mayfield, he was struggling to hit anyone on on last Sunday. He couldn't hit wide open guys like Odell Beckham Jr. streaking down the sidelines. You could say the same thing for Justin Herbert. He missed the easy throw to Mike Williams too, but you got to think about it. You're not going to get a lot of open guys, especially not against this Chargers defense playing among the best in the league. And now I know what the people are going to be saying. The, the Chargers rush defense, terrible. The Cleveland Browns love to run the ball. I get it. Sure, the numbers are there, but just because you love to run the ball, it's, you can load the box. You can stop that sort of thing. Whereas you're going to make Baker beat you. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if the Chargers defense do that say hey we're gonna load the box we're gonna make baker make some throws against tight man coverage against these chargers cornerbacks which are very good and a banged up browns wide receiver core which has odell beckham jr but not much else after that now last note chargers three and one they're battle tested they beat the washington football team in week one which is arguably you know not the greatest win but they beat the chiefs they beat the raiders who people really love apparently and they've lost by three to a very good cowboys team that is turning a lot of heads this year. Now you look at the Browns, they lost to the Chiefs in week one, and then since then they beat the Texans, Bears, and the Vikings. All three teams are not necessarily, and it was the Bears with rookie quarterback Justin Fields for his first ever start. But they humbled the Vikings last week, but the Vikings are who they are. And you look at the Browns defense, I think it's a little bit overhyped so far. Miles Garrett, he's a tank. I, mean, I gotta say, I wouldn't like to see him coming at me, but I think they're a little bit overhyped. Their yardage and all their stats are a little bit inflated after two good games against a rookie QB and Kirk Cousins who struggled with an injured Dalvin Cook. Either way, I'm taking the Chargers to cover this minus one and a half, and I'm locking it in. My next spread pick, it's a yucky one. We're going with Saints, minus one and a half, minus 110 on bet MGM at Washington football team. Saints, I don't know what happened in week four. I don't know what to tell you. Losing by, losing an 11-point lead in the fourth quarter, losing to the Giants in overtime. I know Ronak was happy, but I mean, what can you do about that? And they're going up against the Washington team that just came back and beat the Falcons 34-30 to in a wild, very high-scoring game, which I had the under in, so you love to see that. Um, the Saints, they're the epitome of a hot and cold team. They're only good on odd weeks, apparently. And week five, that's an odd number, so we're all in. If you look at it, week one, they destroyed the Packers. Week two, they come out flat against the Panthers. Week three, come out and just destroy the Patriots and Mac Jones and then week four obviously against the Giants what was that now the only reason I'm here is I think the Saints bounce back and I think Sean Payton gets this team playing right in the Washington defense yeah I know it's terrible I learned the buy lesson I thought you know what maybe they're gonna bounce back and they'll look good yeah no they didn't do any of that against the Falcons they look terrible and so that's why I'm here the numbers are absolutely downright disgusting that you're seeing from the Washington defense. They can't stop anyone. And I think the Saints defense good enough to stop Taylor Heineke, force him into some tough spots. And you know, so, I mean, you were looking at Washington. They could have lost last week, but obviously Taylor Heineke with that cross field play to JD McKissick gets him the win and eventually. But Washington, they'll see a heavy dose of Alvin Kamara who's seen the ball 25 times a game, especially with Tony Jones, I think Tony Jones Jr. out this game. 
I think Jameis Winston can put up some points against this Washington defense. Taysom Hill will play his role, maybe Vulture gets some touchdowns. All in all, I think the Saints go into FedEx Field, not only win, but also to cover one and a half points. It's a Washington football team that also struggled kicking the ball, so if a field goal comes into play, that could also play a role. Sean Payton won his last five of his last, he's won five of the last six matchups for Ron Rivera, obviously the historic Panthers coach for eight, nine years of his career, coaching career. I think Sean Payton and the Saints bounce back, get this win in week five. And I'm locking them in. Minus one and a half. Now let's move on to some over-unders, which we struggled last week. We were 0-2. They kind of drug down the record. Or else we were 9-6 and six on everything else. But I'm taking the Texans. Taking their team total under 15 points. Minus 112. 12 on FanDuel. This number's low. And it's for good reason. Davis Mills... I'm sorry, my friend. You have not looked all that great. And it's it's a rookie QB. Two starts. But if you look at it, he's managed nine points in week three and then a big zero points in week four. Uh, me and a couple, ten other of the subscribers could have scored as many points as the as the Texans did last week. That was that was abysmal what they did. And this week to get a pesky Patriots def defense coming off a loss to the Patriot or to the Buccaneers led by Tom Brady, but only only letting them score 19 points, one of the better offenses in the NFL. Now, rookie QBs, as we've talked about, and I uh, foolishly picked the Jets in week two to cover. Yeah, Bill Belichick has their number. He has rookie QBs numbers, and you look at it, Zach Wilson week two put up just six points, four interceptions. Last year, Justin Herbert, who we all would say is a better quarterback than Davis Mills, he, he managed zero points and two interceptions. Two attack of Iloa managed 22 points last season, but that required two late rushing touchdowns in the fourth quarter, something I don't think two late rushing touchdowns by Tua. And then you think about back to 2019, Luke Falk, the old Jets rookie QB, who just played about one or two games. Yeah, he managed 14 points. Same for Daniel Jones. Then you look at Josh Allen back in 2018, managed just 12 points. Sam Darnold, three points. You have to go all the way back to Deshaun Watson in 2017. Again, for a guy that lit up the Patriots defense as a rookie, 33 points. And maybe he's a Texans quarterback. Maybe that's what it takes. You have to be a Texans quarterback to light up the Patriots as a rookie. I don't think Davis Mills is Deshaun Watson. Sorry, my friend, but I'm going to think the Patriots offense will get it going. They'll be chewing the clock, running it with Damian Harris. I don't mind taking the game's total under, which is like 39 and a half, but I'll take the Titans, or not the Titans, the Texans team total under 15 points. Don't think they're getting there. Moving on to another over-under, Panthers-Eagles. Eagles, I'm taking the over, 44 and a half points, minus 112 on Barstool. Panthers have Sam Darnold playing the best football of his career, and it hurts as a Jets fan to say that, but he's playing awesome. And despite missing CMC, which we still don't know if he'll be in or out this week as I record this late on a Wednesday night, CMC might be there, and if he is, even better. But if not, Chuba Hubbard filled right in for him last week. Obviously not CMC. CMC, one of the best running backs in the NFL. But Christian McCaffrey, regardless of not, they still got Sam Darnold playing lights out. And I'm taking this over just based on that Eagles defense, which has looked pretty bad the last two games since Brandon Graham, their pro bowler, went out with an injury. Fletcher Cox not looking all that good. You look at the Eagles lit up for 41 points by the Cowboys in week three. Last week, the Chiefs outdid the Cowboys, scoring 42, just one point more. And I'm now, I don't necessarily, I'm not saying, hey, Sam Darnold's Patrick Mahomes or Dak Prescott, or hey, this Panthers offense is better than the Cowboys or Chiefs or at that same level. But this is still a very good offense. They've scored since week one when they struggled. It was the first week in the new system for Sam Darnold against my New York Jets. They've scored 26, 24, and 28 points. So this Eagles defense is not getting any better. And I think that this Panthers offense can keep turning along, especially if we see CMC back, which I don't, I, like I said, I don't know if that's going to happen. It won't affect my decision. I also think the Eagles, they're capable offense. You look at the Panthers, this defense, the stats are loaded because of how the bad competition they've played. Obviously, they saw Zach Wilson in week one. Week two, Jameis Winston didn't play well, obviously. Week three, saw Davis Mills. I mean, all their stats are inflated. And then week four, you saw they played a very good Cowboys offense, 36 points dropped on them. And so I'm not necessarily saying this Eagles offense is the Cowboys and they'll score that many points. But Jalen Hurts, he could pose some problems. Devontae Smith, the rookie wide receiver, they got to get Miles Sanders going at least at some rate, right? If you're a Miles Sanders fantasy owner, you're like, oh, well, might as well bench this guy. And I don't blame you. But I think that the Eagles, they, a lot of people are picking them to cover. But I like as a sharp play, but I like the over better. I could see a final score is like 28 to 24. Eagles or Panthers winning that game. That would have cashed the over. So I'm taking it over 44 and a half points. Moving on to my favorite teaser of the week. Seven point teaser plus 120. Patriots minus one and a half. Buccaneers minus three. And Cowboys minus zero, which just means basically Cowboys money line. They do not have to tie. Now the Patriots, they play the Texans. Like we already talked about, very few rookie QBs succeed. And all we're really asking them to do is win by two. You look at the they lost 40-0 to zero last week against the Bills. Yeah, I'm in. Mac Jones and the offense can get them to cover at least one and a half, maybe even eight and a half at this rate. Now the Bucks, they play the Dolphins, whose offense, to be nice, 
has not looked very good. Now, they obviously are missing Tua Tagovailoa, who should return in a week or two. And Jacoby Brissett, he's not it. Sorry, he's not doing too well. Bucks 10-point favorites. That's why I put a 7-point teaser down to 3 points. Wouldn't surprise me if they covered the 10 points either. Their offense will get better back, back to strengths. I mean, they played against New England, a very good defense that knows Tom Brady like the back of their hand. I think the defense will only get better now for the Buccaneers. Richard Sherman should shake off some more rust. I like the Bucks to win by three, at least. Minus three, not going to count. They, they got to win by three, right? And then lastly, Cowboys versus the Giants. A sketchy leg, but do you think the Cowboys will win this game? Now, will they cover the seven points? That's a good question. I do you think the Giants keep it close, but I think the Cowboys offense and Trayvon Diggs is playing out of his mind on the defense. I think they get it done. Ezekiel Elliott finally got going last week in week four with the best game of his of his uh of this career of this season so far and i like it all these three teams the cover plus 120 and i'm locking it in let's move on to some player props i only got two this week but i will have a lot more on saturday's video so make sure you go check out that one when it is live but deandre hopkins i'm taking his over five and a half receptions minus 140 on caesars and i know it's about minus 140 on DraftKings. a couple different books if you have if you have been taking this bet every single week you're like all right DeAndre Hopkins, over five and a half receptions. Yeah, you're one in three. You're down a couple units. And he's had three straight losing weeks after barely cashing it with six receptions in week one. And he's had some tough matchups. In week two, he saw Pat Pete, who's a guy that had played and practiced against him all last year. And then he had the rib injury. And then he played Jalen Ramsey again last, last few week, which is a tough injury. Not only injured, but also going up against one of the best corners in the league. Now, this is now he gets a great matchup against a 49ers secondary, which is very suspect to say the least. We saw what uh, Devontae Adams did to them a couple weeks back against the secondary 12 receptions, 132 yards, and Hopkins is in that same wide receiver tier as Devontae Adams. Now, the main reason I'm here, though, is his past track record against his 49ers team. Now, he's only played them three times over the last five seasons, once being back in 2017. He put up 11 receptions, 149, and two touchdowns. That's not really going to carry a lot of weight. This is a brand new team. It was a Houston Texan then, brand new team four years ago. But these two teams did play two team, two times last year. What are his stats? Last year in their first matchup, 14 receptions, just 1-4 one for 151 yards. And then the game before, the game after that, later on in the season, another eight receptions for 48 yards. Now, all we're asking for is six receptions. I think he can get it done. The Cardinals have been spreading around a lot. Kyler Murray's giving it to her. Guys like A.J. Green, Rondell Moore, Christian Kirk, and I think that's really going to help Hopkins season long. They're not going to be force-feeding him 25 targets a game, but I think this is a get-right game. We predicted a get-right game for Stephon Diggs last week, or ended up with seven receptions. I think this is another get-right game for DeAndre Hopkins in a big, easy plus matchup against his 49er secondary. Like I said, they can't just key in on DeAndre Hopkins. Just like, do you see A.J. Green, a resurgence? Rondell Moore's looking good. Christian Kirk's looking good. Max Williams, or tight end, looking good. Chase Edmonds out of the backfield. There's a lot of guys in air. Arizona that are very good at catching the ball and I think that means more single one-on-one -on -one opportunities for DeAndre Hopkins and spoiler I'm pretty sure Kyler Murray is going to be taking those one-on-one -on -one opportunities so I'm in on DeAndre Hopkins to go over five and a half receptions last player prop of this video but we'll have plenty more in the week four slate or week five uh, parlays video posted Saturday morning Corderell Patterson I'm taking this over 62 and a half rushing plus receiving yards minus 115 on DraftKings as a side note if you don't have this line I wouldn't mind taking I would probably take his over in receiving yards but let's get into this I need some action. It's a 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time London game. So if the game has already started and you haven't, you didn't lock this bet in and maybe you're watching after the fact. Now, just hoping that Cordero Patterson is treating us nicely on a Saturday morning. But let's talk about it. So far this season, this is his combined rushing and receiving yard stat stats. Week 1, 67 rushing and receiving. 69 in week 2, 102 in week 3, and 116 last week. He continues to go up. Man, he's having like Bitcoin. He's going up again, up and up and up. Man, hopefully I didn't. Hopefully I didn't just jinx Bitcoin. I had a really good day Wednesday, but maybe I'm falling into this trap, and maybe that is maybe that's the case. And Patterson's just gonna come and just slap me and say, you know what? You just you learn. You should have learned better. My friend has been eight years in the making. Every time he looks good, he just comes and just show it proves you wrong. But the Jets are one of the best matchups in the NFL. They're one of the worst at defending opposing running backs, especially out of the backfield receiving the ball. And you look at last week, Derrick Henry ran for 157 yards on them, but that's not the real reason. Jeremy McNichols, their backup running back, uh, that's more of their receiving back. Eight receptions, 74 yards. They couldn't stop him. And he was just coming out of the backfield, catching passes left and right. The week before that, Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams of the Broncos combined for 89 yards rushing, 54 yards receiving. Week two, James White had six receptions for 45 yards. Pretty good out of the backfield. Jamie Harris, I think, had, I don't know, like 60 to 80 yards rushing. Don't remember the exact number. And then week one, you saw CMC, 89 yards receiving on nine receptions. And he had 98 yards on the ground. Now, I understand 
you know, Cordero Patterson. He's not Christian McCaffrey. He's not Derrick Henry. But this guy is a guy with unique size and unique talent. I think the Jets will have a tough time stopping him. Now, mainly because they'll be focused on Kyle Pitts and probably Calvin Ridley. The Jets' defensive line played really well last week against the Titans, and that could lead to some more dump-offs, which is what they did to Jeremy McNichols, the, run the running back out of the backfield. Wouldn't be surprised to see that again. Now, if you're the Falcons, you see Cordero Patterson, not only with 116 yards last week, total yards, but also, and he's returning the ball, so that's even more. But... I mean, you look at Mike Davis, and he had three touchdowns, obviously. Mike Davis is not inspiring anyone. He had 13 carries for 14 rushing yards last week. Corderell should have anywhere from 10 to 15 touches against this Jets defense. I think there's he's got elite size, elite speed. And Arthur Smith, the new Falcons QB or head coach, he's got to be like, all right, well, we got to get our skilled play players the position in the position to get the ball. And I think they're going to get Cordero Patterson more involved this week. He's been making a lot of it out of his touches, so why not give him the ball some more? Turn the haters into believers. So I'm in on Cordero Patterson, over 62 and a half, rushing plus receiving yards, minus 115 on DraftKings. That'll do it. My parlays video will be on Saturday. I'll have some more player props. And like I said, really only had about four or five games to really sort through and there weren't a lot of lines that I liked too much. As a reminder, drop your 10,000 subscribers idea challenge down below. Let me know your favorite bet that you're blocking in this weekend. My parlays video live Saturday morning, so make sure you check out that video. I'll have a separate video on Sunday Night Football, Bills versus Chiefs, as well as the Ravens versus Colts Monday Night Football video. As always, we appreciate it. Let's go have a great week five. Let's make some money this weekend and go crazy on these books. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys again next week. Peace.